Morning, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a, uh, a fairly busy schedule here, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Chairman Stevens is going to join us sooner or later. I think there's a lot of people that have 2 o'clock committee meetings also, so I would ask that the presenters just uh, please do it in the form of brevity. And before I forget it, uh, Sydney uh, has asked me to tell the members of the committee, <coughs> excuse me, that in your folders you have the latest uh, report from the Georgia Department of Economic Development, so please take that and look at it. We're going to have to adopt rules today, but we're going to wait until Chairman Stevens gets back. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And um, uh, Jim Sprouse, uh, if you want to just come forward and uh, make your remarks and get everybody started, let's just go from there. Jim? Hmm. OK. All right. Um, Ron Tarson. Ron, you get to go first. Thank you for being here with us today. Oh, okay. Jim's here? Okay. Ron, you're second. <laughs> Jim, you get to go first. to provide information for the committee. Uh, we've gathered information from a lot of third-party sources and from within our own properties. Uh, today and at any time in the future, we're happy to serve as a resource for information. But the Georgia Hotel and Lodging Association represents the lodging industry and the companies who provide products and services to the industry. We were originally founded in 1907, and our mission is to promote, protect, and educate the lodging industry around the state and to ensure positive business growth for its members. At uh, the scale of the industry, there are about 1,900 brick and mortar properties across the state, 144,000 guest rooms, 37.6 million room nights are sold annually, 247,000 jobs and 4.2% of all jobs in Georgia are related to hospitality. Uh, 129,000 direct impact jobs and 19.1 billion contributed to the Georgia GOP. The industry supports 5.1 billion of federal, state, and local taxes. We're the face that visitors to the state see first. Hotels are great ambassadors for their communities and a cornerstone for local economic activity. Hotels and lodging businesses support their communities through increased tax revenue, capital investment, tourism-related development and promotion, civic leadership, and charitable contributions and sponsorship. According to a recent national study, for every $100 that a guest spends in a hotel on lodging, another $221 is spent by guests in the local community for restaurants, small businesses, retail, transportation, just to name a few. A recent survey at the U.S. Conference of Mayors on the value of hotels, nine out of 10 mayors said their communities could benefit from more hotels. 68% say hotels and lodging are the largest contributors to their city's destination. And now I'd like to introduce three of our hotel leaders, and I'll introduce each one, and then they'll come up in turn to provide their information and their stories. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Frank Fair. Frank, if you'll just stand up. Frank is the chairman of the GHLA board. He's general manager of the Embassy Suites Hotel Atlanta at Olympic Park. And with that, I'll turn it over to Frank. Thanks, Jim. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, like Jim said, my name is Frank Fair. I am the general manager of the Embassy Suites in downtown Atlanta. Um, we have 321 rooms at the hotel and employ about 200 taxpaying citizens. Um, I'm also chairman of the Georgia Hotel Lodging Association. Before I started in the hospitality industry, I was in politics. Many of you don't know that. In the second grade, I was the treasurer of my class, um, which I guess led me uh, to comprehend dollars and cents, and that's why I'm kind of talking about this subject today. Um, the hospitality industry as a whole has always contributed mightily to the Georgia tax collection and has seen this increase over the years and especially in 2015 with the addition of the $5 fee. Um, here's some facts that we've gathered. 
The average monthly collection of the $5 fee ranges from $13.75 million to $15 million. More than $165 million was collected in the first 12 months of enactment. The average daily collection is between $450,000 to $495,000. As a property in Fulton County in the city of Atlanta, our hotel properties also pay local property tax, payroll tax, occupancy tax, state tax, local sales tax, and now the $5 fee. In addition to paying the taxes and fees, we have licenses, liquor licenses, food and beverage licenses, miscellaneous regulatory licenses, and these are just needed to maintain the properties. Um, my property, my guests, and my property alone, remember, 321-room hotel, we pay just under 25% of our room revenue in tax. In addition, I estimated in 2016, Georgia residents paid nearly $90,000 of the $5 fee just at my hotel. And again, I am 321 room hotel out of 144,000 rooms in the, across the state. So I'm two tenths of all hotel rooms, two tenths. I also estimated that our backyard accounts, that headquarter here in Atlanta, nearly paid $75,000 in the $5 fee. You can see it impacts all. Um, we also want to talk about industry parity. It's very important to us. Our tax contribution from the, to the local and state government entities is tremendous, yet our competitors in the marketplace are just not subject to the same burden, burden of the tax and regulations. Third-party rentals are operating outside of state and local guidelines, not paying taxes and fees, and are not subject to the state and local reviews, unlike the bricks and mortars of our hotels. While the industry continues to see record occupancy, record growth in Atlanta, most economists say we're at a tipping point here. We could see a, a decline. And at that point, the tax burden that we've had imposed on us could be even more um, disadvantaged to our competitor cities. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to let everybody present, and then if you have any questions, we'll just ask you to, to weigh in on those individually, if that's all right with you guys. Okay. Hi again. Uh, I'm Ron Tarson. I got bumped to third position. I'm general manager at the Weston Peachtree Plaza, and we have about 450 employees. I say about because most of our staffing is variable. It's dependent on our occupancy and the quality of our business. It can be 100 people working at our hotel on certain days, and when we're filled with the right business, it might be 750. It all depends on how many rooms there are to clean, meals to serve, receptions to host, drinks to make, etc. I want to thank this committee because you've supported us so much throughout the years and we really do appreciate it. And I'm also very happy that I'm not coming here with a whole set of issues to talk to you about. Uh, things are good and we want to keep them good. Instead, what I'm going to do is put myself in the shoes of someone in any town in Georgia, particularly not in Atlanta, and talk about why we think our industry is so important. First, we're good citizens. We pay lots of taxes, as Frank just told you, and that taxes work all across the state. We care about issues and we vote. We provide jobs at various levels. First jobs, steady jobs, entry-level jobs, part-time jobs. We hire moms, dads, students, newly arrived citizens, people getting back on their feet, as well as those who've graduated college and are looking for their first job. We appreciate people who stay with us, who find a job they like and stay for years. We have people at our hotel who were there at the opening in 1976 and are still there today. We also like the people who advance. You hear stories in hotels of everybody who started as something, and it's usually not a manager after college. Most everybody in this industry started simply and started at the bottom. I started as a bouncer. <laughs> I worked in tandem with another guy who was bigger and scarier, uh, but I could, add, I could subtract. And so in checking IDs, we had it worked out that he would stop the guy, I'd look at the ID and subtract and figure out if he was 71, and we had a few signals that would say yes or no, and then he'd let him in or not. Worked out perfectly. But to think that someone could start checking IDs with a pretty rudimentary math skill and end up 
as a general manager of an iconic hotel in Atlanta is not unusual. It usually starts that way and people can move quite a bit in the hotel industry. We have someone at our property who started as a housekeeper. Pretty soon she went on to become a barista at Starbucks. Then she became a housekeeping supervisor and now she's a maintenance engineer really moving along. And what we're happy about is watching her career and wondering what's next. Whatever community you're in, hotel people are good neighbors. Our business helps local restaurants, local attractions, folks in transportation, destinations. You can tell the difference whether a convention's in Atlanta or a baseball tournament's in Columbus, the difference between having the business and not having the business. We support statewide business development. One of the things we've been spending a lot of time on is film, the film industry, and we know we're giving good tax credits and attracting a lot of business. We're also supporting that industry by giving them rooms when they need them and making sure that they stay close to their shoots where they'll come back. And we've got studios like Pinewood Studios in Fayette County and other studios who want to be close to the action. And when the film crews stay, they spend. And if they can stay near filming and studios, they'll come back. It also creates local jobs and new jobs, new small business development, like scene planning. Where are you going to put the scenes? How do we locate the houses? Uh, equipment rentals, catering, parking, transportation, security, communication. It's all good for business. Hotels also give back to the communities. You'll know this in your communities. At our property, we have one thing we do each month in particular. Other people volunteer on their own. We give a lot of donations and support. And one of the examples we have is a Georgia-based company called the Jack and Jill Foundation, who unfortunately is in the business of providing what is usually the last experience for a terminally ill family. And for example, we, we, had, one week, we had a family in for one weekend where all the rooms, all the meals are free. We worked with the Braves to get them to a game. We worked with transportation companies. And this is their last memory. And the most touching thing they do is they send out pictures of this and have a book of all of the families. And really, no words are necessary after that. In even not obvious ways, we reach all beyond Atlanta into all parts of Georgia. You know, we have the Sundial restaurant on top of our hotel, and it's, it's great for business. It's a great experience, and it's fantastic advertising for Atlanta and for Georgia. You can look out to Kennesaw Mountain out to, or towards Stone Mountain, and you could, everybody's asking questions. What is that? What do you have there? And we answer those questions. But you're also likely experiencing Georgia in other ways. We get lettuce from Atlanta Harvest north of Atlanta, mushrooms from Kihi Farm in Noonan, we get our specialty breads from Breadworks International in Norcross, pasta from Pasta Mamie in Marietta, and fine cheese from Sweetgrass Dairy in Thomasville. We send folks all over the state. Our associates get very attractive rates when they stay at other neighboring properties, and they're likely to be in Georgia. We send guests on excursions to Savannah and Dahlonega, anywhere in the state. We also like to rotate groups from coastal Georgia to, to Atlanta because they don't like to be in the same place uh, every year. We're all over the state and when we are, when, when we do well, we feel like everybody else does well. We're far reaching, uh, we're everywhere and we really have more connectivity with one another than sometimes we think about. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to have him bounce you out of here, too. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Daryl Leach, Vice President of the Augusta Marriott at the Convention Center. We were proud to host the Georgia Democratic Convention this past June. And the hard part about going forth is that they've used most of your material. I want to talk a little bit about the impact of the $5 hotel fee. Uh, as you know, um, it, it's put us in a somewhat of a precarious competitive disadvantage. Um, Augusta, Georgia now has the fourth highest taxed hotel rate in the nation behind New York, Washington, D.C., Orlando, and Las Vegas. As you can see, that might be an impediment for us to do business. Fifty-six percent of our room revenue in Augusta, Georgia at the Marriott comes from Georgia-based companies. So this fee is negatively impacting all these Georgia businesses. 
Think about all the Georgia state associations that travel around and try to stay in the state, and this becomes another impediment for them to do that rather than to go to Hilton Head or some of those neighboring states. Think about the local sports organizations, the high school football teams, golf teams, lacrosse teams, tennis teams, etc., that come to us where we're a border city, and they come down and they have a three or four day tournament, and that $5 fee now becomes a $20 fee, which would have been two meals. <coughs> are they gonna stay with us, or are they gonna go across the border? Well, we see them go across the border. I guess, from a personal standpoint, I don't understand why one industry would get taxed so heavily to fix all the roads and bridges in Georgia. Why wouldn't this be some kind of consumption tax spread across everybody, like fuel? Then not, every, not one industry would be so negatively impacted. You know, although the Atlanta occupancies are great, that might not be the case in some of the other tertiary markets like my market. I know we're very popular one week a year in April. Everybody wants to come to Augusta. But the other 51 weeks are a struggle. Trust me. The other question I ask is, if you're going to keep this $5 fee, which I hope you don't, is that you'll use half of it to market our industry and help improve our sales and revenues because of all the statistics that Jim gave you and all the money that we generate for the state of Georgia. And last but not least, um, we spent $1.5 million in purchasing products from Georgia vendors like my colleague here, to make sure that we support Georgians. So in closing, it's my goal that you will hope to take and get rid of this fee because it really is an impediment to our business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, one more person I'd like to introduce you to is Steve Smith. Steve, where are you in the room? If you'd stand up, I want you to know Steve. Steve is our executive director for our Atlanta Hotel Council, which is, you know, think of a chapter of the state organization, but he's very active in the city and another good resource for you. But just a few things to wrap up from my standpoint. The industry's had some good years. Uh, I like to think that we're riding the crest of the wave right now. Uh, but I think there's an opportunity to do better and for the state to do better. Uh, we made the point, we gave you a handout that gave you some facts and figures on the, the marketing spend for the state of Georgia. We're among the lowest, I think second lowest, Mississippi's just a little lower than us. And in the bottom tier, it's $6.5 million. Florida, for example, spends over 70 million while we're at six and a half. If you throw out the top seven spends of all of the other states in the survey, and you take an average, the midpoint is almost twice what we spend for Georgia. So I thought that was an interesting stat. We've got a great story to tell for Georgia, and it gets better every year. And that's partly due to the actions of this committee. We're, we're certainly riding the top with the film industry. That's very exciting. Uh, every day we hear great stories there, and, and they, they stay in our hotels, and they provide a lot of local business. It allows us to provide a lot of jobs for Georgians, and it allows us to do a lot with local charities. But uh, that's kind of our message. I wanted you to get a feel for who we are as an industry, the kind of things that we're involved in, and if there's any questions that any of us can answer, we're happy to do so. Thank you, Jim. I, I don't see any questions, I, so you, you have a question? Or you have a question? <laughs> oh, okay. Where are you here? There we go. We're having uh, technical problems here. It's me. It's not this. You should be on it. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes, sir. I, I just, I have Oh, my God. 
Excuse me just a second. I'll try your mic now. Can I try now? He, okay, he, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he hasn't had any decrease in occupancy, and it was not something that many of us wanted to do. 170 forced us to look under every rock, and we did spread it out because we did an excise tax on gasoline that everybody got to feel a bit of it. And, and it, it's a difficult, difficult thing, but then we think on the other hand, tourism that comes to Georgia, they demand good roads and good infrastructure, or they won't come. So it's the chicken and the egg with us. And, and I, I, I hate it, and I hope that one day, you know, I don't know what the conversation will lead to, Mr. Chairman, and, but I, I for one did not want to see you guys get hit by a $5 tax until I saw these good looking suits and these socks. Then I said maybe it wasn't so bad after all. But one other thing is we'll continue to look. You do a great job for us. And the one thing that I strongly agree with you is that we don't spend nearly enough money promoting this state. It is really sinful. Because every time I turn on my television set, they want me to come to Alabama and play the Bobby Jones Golf Trail. But listen, I, I empathize with you. I'm, I'm sorry, but um, you guys were in the line of fire, and you took that last arrow. But maybe, you know, there's some cure. When we had our last State Baptist Convention in Augusta, you all did a great job. You should have come down. I'd have prayed for you. Might have done some good. But... <laughs> Man. No, no, we're, we're not going there. <laughs> we're not going there. Um, thank you, Representative Williams. We, uh, <clears throat> and I'll just say, I think everybody's kind of got their position on this thing, and we're not going to get into a, a whole-scale debate on this today, but y'all have made your position, and I think that may be something that we'll be looking at. Representative Rakestraw, do you have something here? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so... We definitely didn't want to harm your industry, yet we were trying to figure out a way to collect revenue from, you know, the people using the roads, staying in your hotels. Um, and it sounds like we're way out of um, proportion with other states, and that's pretty alarming. Um, ha has this it caused a decrease in your occupancy that you've noticed statewide? Well, it, it depends Region. on where you are in terms of the, the type of property. The border cities, I think, are impacted more. Okay. And like I mentioned before, we're in a good cycle right now. Like all businesses, everything is in cycles. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, we're riding the crest. At some point, it will turn, and it will increasingly come important to the visitor on the total taxes and fees. Uh, one of the samples we look to is what happened in New York City. Now, it's been a while, I think it was 2008, New York City raised their total taxes and fees to over 20%, where we are now in mm -hmm. four Georgia cities. They lost a large part of their convention business and they lost a lot of their tax base because it was just a point it was too much. The big joke at that time was stay for four nights, pay for five, mm -hmm. when, when you hit that 20% point. And when they reduced it in subsequent years, their tax base more than doubled just because of the increased level of participation and occupancy rate. Well, I know when we looked at the tax bill in the border cities, you know, looking at fuel taxes, then the issue was hitting, you know, the, the stores and stations that sell fuel because then they were filling up across state lines. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to have a way to capture the revenue. So have you guys taken a look at, you know, where you'd like that tax to be? And my second question is, is if you had to choose between an increase in marketing spend and keeping the tax where it's at or keeping the marketing spend where it's at and decreasing it somewhat, which one would your industry prefer? Well, that's a tough question. I'd like some feedback from my members, but I know we want this, this fee to go down. Uh, some of the stats I gave you looking at other cities around the country that in states that have a fee, a flat fee like that, I think uh, the next largest one was 250 or three dollars, and we're at five. Uh, taking it down to that 250 or 350 level, I think, would be much more tolerable to the industry and more fair. And if we could also take a look at the rules and regulations, 
Uh, we spent a lot of time with the Department of Revenue before this went into play, bringing in industry experts, taking a look at how it would be applied, and it's applied in the strictest manner possible. For example, if you take advantage of a comp room, for whatever reason, that $5 fee has to be paid. Uh, another issue that's really popped up and continues to pop up is in the area of extended stays. Extended stay hotels are real often populated by people. It's, you know, it's all they can do to stay at that particular property. Now they're having to pay for the first 30 days that extra $5, so that extra $150 is coming out of it that they can ill afford. And another issue that's really popped up recently is local cities and communities are changing their rules for extended stay, forcing them to move after as few as 15 days. Therefore, they never get out of the 30-day requirement. It continues that they have to pay that $5 fee. Okay, so I would just ask that, you know, when you talk to your membership, you come back, you know, with a proposed solution and, and you know, if you had a preference, what that would be, you know, what you would like to, that to look like to help your industry, because we don't want to hamper any industry in Georgia, and I don't think that was the intent when this was done, yet we had the issue of, um, you know, the border um, counties to the state, you know, people were filling up over state lines, so we couldn't do it in pure fuel taxes, yet we had to capture revenue from the people that were visiting our state, and, you know, it makes sense to do that with the hotels, so. Anyway, so I'd love to hear more from y'all. Okay, well, okay. I think you. the same argument applies to the to hotel room because we, we have the stories of, of groups that choose to stay across the line. Columbus is a great example. They can go just across the river into Phoenix City, not pay the $5 fee. In fact, I had one of my, my own employees, she's been with me forever, but her family is very big into softball tournaments. And it's a family thing. They travel all over the place. And they were recently going to Columbus. And in, in, that, in that little group, they're doing the analysis. Do we stay in Columbus or do we go across the river and save the $5? Because for that family expense, that's a significant difference for them. So I think the same analogy applied to gas applies to us. We just didn't have the opportunity to, to make that point. And then Daryl shared some information on the percentages of Georgians that booked those rooms. And it's a large percentage. All right. What was your number, Daryl? 55%? 56% are paid by Georgians. And another thing to look at is companies like Delta, Home Depot, they're buying massive amounts of ho hotel rooms for their crews or crews for Georgia Power when they're going out to work the storm. The $5 fee applies. Okay. Um, Representative Henson, did you have some? I, I tell you, I'm going to let her get through this, and like I said, we're on sort of a tight time frame today, so look, we, can, we can take it back up later. Representative Henson. Thank you. Um, it's there we go. Try that now. Okay. Is it on now? Thank you. Um, I think there's a lot of different issues, and I think Jim addressed a lot of them. My biggest problem that I had when this went through was the fact that you didn't bring these folks to the table. You dropped it on them, the folks that negotiated 170. I mean, they weren't able to have any input into it. And I don't think we should be doing that to an industry, as dropping something this massive on them without any input and just saying, oh, by the way, we just did this to you. So, you know, I'm one of the ones that voted against the bill, not because I voted against transportation, but because I felt that was the wrong thing to do to an industry. Um, Secondly, we talk about promoting the hotel industry. We talk about promoting Georgia, the different parts of Georgia, the advertising for Georgia. Where Al Williams lives, he does get the advertising for Alabama. Where I live, I love it. The Booth Museum up in um, Cartersville has been advertising heavily. They've got great things going on there. But anyway, not to, not to digress much, a lot of the hotels, and I'm hearing this, are going to be moving from five cents to eight cents in terms of their um, tax structure that they have on what they're collecting. And that will give them a little more money. The, 
that will go to the convention bureaus. It also will give the counties or cities, whichever the respective are in, which also enables them to have the convention centers to have a little more money to do advertising for their particular areas. So when we keep this $5 and we add the additional monies, you know, we're upping it all the time. And, you know, they're asking for it to be decreased some, and I think it's something that we really need to take a serious look at because of the additional dollars they're going in to help allow the local communities to promote their part of Georgia and their piece of Georgia. Um, tourism's, you know, don't have to preach to a choir, but it's one of our biggest industries, the hotel industry, which is why I came to Georgia in the first place. I mean, come on, we, you know, for every seven dollar, was it, for every one dollar spent, we get seven dollars in return. Mm -hmm. It's, where else do you get that? Where else do you get a clean industry? Where else do you get a bouncer who's now general manager? And those things happen and all over this industry, and it's phenomenal. It is an industry we ought to cherish and not just throw things at them. So that's sort of my little speech for today, but I'd love to make sure that we work with them closer and we don't throw things at them at the last minute that do have a negative impact. I appreciate your remarks. Thank you for those. We might want to take that up with the transportation chair. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. Um, appreciate you being here. I don't see any more questions at this point. So I, I will say that uh, living in North, uh, representing North Georgia, I realize, of course, what the hospitality industry is and everything and what good neighbors and, and what good stewards y'all are and how much we do appreciate you. Um, you know, Georgia for the four straight years has been the number one state in the nation to do business and you guys have been an integral part of that and we most certainly appreciate that and appreciate y'all being here today. So, um, Jim, I think we're gonna kind of wrap it up right there right. and then we're gonna go to a little bit of housekeeping business. Um, if you guys uh, on the committee will look into your folders, um, you'll see that uh, we're gonna have to adopt some rules uh, you've got a copy of those. I'll give you a second to look those over. And then I will entertain a motion to uh, adopt the rules. Have a motion from uh, Representative Belton. Do I hear a second? Representative Stovall with the second. Okay, we've got a motion before the committee. Uh, it's open for discussion. Any discussion? All right, not seeing any. All in favor of adopting the rules, please say aye. Any opposed? No? All right, so the rules are adopted. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I want to do before we close out here is to uh, acknowledge that and thank uh, the staff that we've got. We've got a new administrative assistant. Mr. Hartley here is Donna Hartley is, is taking care of Chairman Stevens, which I think she deserves combat pay for. But make her welcome, and Xavier is our intern, and uh, it's a great staff, and we are very, very excited with all that they are doing. Um, hearing or seeing nothing else, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'm done then. Thanks. I'll drop you. Yeah, I got you. There you go. Thank you.